Hello friends and warlords, welcome to Saga Thor's Day, the show all about the skirmish miniatures game from Studio Tomahawk. I'm your host, Raj, joined once again by Monty. How are you, buddy? Awesome, Raj. How about yourself? Oh, um, I'm doing pretty good here. It's been a busy month. Um, I did get uh, quite a few games in early in the month, yeah, but okay. then the last couple of weeks here, family stuff's been kicking that around as far as yep. gaming goes same thing with hobby um how, how's it going for you uh so uh i was trying to save time for all the rest of our saga show so no games no hobby <laughs> all right that'll happen yeah especially during summertime so we got a good episode lined up here we are going to uh handle a couple odds and ends before digging into the Bimble Winter Tournament Packet, Monty. I am so stinking excited to get get the packet out. Um, it's been a little bit of ordeal getting a venue, but it's finally sorted. Nice. Really pumped about that. And then we're going to get into the conclusion of the paint contest. So um, people had to paint a unit of warriors yep. for that. And then... Uh, after we do those awards, we're going to do the Saga Thursday patron awards as well. There's some giveaways there, so we're, we're pretty pumped here for topics. But um, let's handle a couple of quick rules things. When it's always important to get the rules right here right. on the show. Uh, okay, so I talked about Stoke Fury and Rush last time. Yep. Unfortunately, yep. I was incorrect on Stoke Fury. So the issue... Uh, is Stoke Fury has been fact to uh, end at the end of the turn. So what I was talking about, you could use Stoke Fury since they had, yep. you know, it's just the next charge or the next activation for Rush. So Stoke Fury has been fact to say that it lasts until the end of the turn only, uh, where Rush does not have that a fact clarification. So I was correct on that. Um, so apologies in round two to Don. I stoked Fury on my hearth guard to get the extra charge range and, and two extra attacks, but it didn't. The charge range didn't matter, and the attacks probably didn't matter because it was six hearth guard charging into his two fatigued hearth guard. Uh, so, but I shouldn't. I had two attacks more than I should have. So apologies in round two, and it didn't affect round one or three that I was playing it incorrectly, but. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll own up to that one, Monty. Take away my trophy. <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, that is it for rules stuff. And uh, let's jump into some events coming up here. I've got three to talk about. Uh, so the official way to get your event mentioned is going to be posting it in the Saga Thursday Discord under tournaments. And then I'll screen, I'll check them all before the episode. I'll screenshot them and put them up here. So there's going to be a melee in Vancouver out there on the West Coast, BC, British Columbia. That's Canada, I guess. Age of Vikings, three games. Uh, nice. Game it in the garage is... I don't know if he's running it, but uh, he's the one posting it. So if you have more questions about that, hit him up on the Discord. We got another one here, Monty. Terry Donor, Chicago's Saga yes. guy. Yep. He's announcing Awakening the Iron Harrier Saga Age of Vikings event, November 19th in Chicago area. I am going to head down to that one. Monty, what do you what do you think? It's a bit of a haul for you guys. Is there any rumblings from your yeah your folks? i mean i think i think we'll see some minneapolis folks uh head down i know it'll be a good show uh chicago's always great and terry's an awesome guy will be an amazing host so yeah looking forward to that mm -hmm. yeah more details coming on that get on the discord if you want some more info but yeah i'm planning to head down there and uh hopefully i have a crew at my back yep want to support any uh, events that i can uh, big one here, Monty. Fimble Winter. Yes. February 18th and 19th. It's a two-day two event, Monty. It's unheard I, of. I wow. love it. I love it. Have I'm, I'm trying to think. Adepticon. Have you been to Adepticon where the Saga Grand Melee was two days? I. 
in the early I days. I think in the early days it in was. In the early days. So it's not the first two-day tournament on North American soil, but it's uh, the first one in a long, long time. <laughs> yes. Yes. At least. Uh, so the last, this Depticon, it wasn't. 2019 definitely wasn't. I, nope. At least two or three before that, it hasn't. Agree. They've been split up. So yep. um, this is a two-day, five-round event, and uh, I couldn't be more stoked about it. I just booked the venue this last week. Um, it's in my hometown here. I was getting jerked around by a different uh, hotel venue and wasn't going good, so I switched. And, uh, yeah, this place is going to be good energy. Um, it is a bowling alley, Mommy. So uh, we're going to be able to chuck some balls. But um, <laughs> restaurant... It bar on site uh very nice facility you know it's meant for weddings and stuff and uh this is the probably the nicest place i've held an event in ever so wow uh and okay. the price price isn't bad so this is in um if you look in the packet it's going to say weston that's wasa that's my home ground that's in the yeah. middle of wisconsin right in the middle of the hand here so um yeah if you're in the midwest it's definitely going to be awesome um it's going to be winter for folks flying in. That's just the way it is. I have run very large events in the middle of winter, and um, the, you know, there's no good good time of year to run any tournament, really. You know, there'll always be something. So this is the date that's going to work. It's a week after the Super Bowl, and the Super Bowl, that, that's what I'm going to key Fimble Winter off of, money. So um, in future years, when you're trying to get your PTO scheduled, just look up the Super Bowl and the week after. That's when we're going to rock it. Got it. Um, so, yeah. If you can come in, if you're flying in, you can come through Central Wisconsin Airport. And me or one of my cronies will pick you up. Um, you can fly into Chicago or Minneapolis, St. Paul. Much prefer the Twin City Airport. There might be a few people willing. I might be looking at one guy willing to yep. give you a ride. I don't know. I'm not going to nope. throw you under the bus, but there's a strong <laughs> chance you could ride in with a good crew, eat, you know, really from the Twin Cities or, or Chicago. Uh, I'll throw Terry under the bus. Uh, he'll get you sorted if you're coming through Chicago. I should have asked him first, but and I'm, I'm throwing it out there. I'm voluntolding Terry. Um, so, yeah, this is going to be awesome. We're going to go through the – pack it here a little bit because we're doing a lot of fun stuff oh yeah at the event so i am running this one and i'm going to be the ringer as well so um if there's an odd number i'm going to be jumping in I'm, i'll play you know the rules are all set up here you know it's been established i'm not opposed to winning my own tournament money you know <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that is correct. But Zach is also, he's helping me out with this one as nice. well. So it's going to be job, 45 Zach. bucks. The packet, it's going to be posted on the Discord for now. I don't know if uh, a website is going to be in my future here to post this, but um, it'll definitely be on the Saga Thursday Discord under the tournament files. Um, yeah. If you can get to central Wisconsin in the middle of winter, you're going to be very pleased with the prices that hotel across the street or actually shares a parking lot money uh, it's going to be 60 or 70 dollars for a twin <laughs> these are the prices you're getting you're dealing with here two dollar beers uh saturday night if, if if you can get here the, you know the cheeseburgers the third pounders are seven bucks uh you know as, if you can get here you're going to be pleased with uh your expenditures uh, so it's going to be a, a cheap event once you're here. Uh, okay, let's get to the, the Saga stuff. We are going to do uh, the optionalize, optional finalized warband mustering. So we can use half points. You got to bring some objectives. Uh, you'll need those. Six points. Nothing too strange there. Here we go. Factions. You can choose any of the main 12 factions from Age of Vikings or eight main factions from Age of Invasions or Umayyads from Old Friends, New Enemies portions of the Age of Vikings book. Um, apart from Umayyads, 
None of the other old friends or new enemy warbands will be used. Okay. Bonnie, what's going on there? Why did I why did I say that? Um you... I'm not sure. I don't wanna I don't wanna wild uh, make a wild guess on this one. I'm not sure. What's up? Oh no. So uh in theory I am uh, in s- support the old friends, new enemies. The Umayyads board is the only one that uses a different board because uh, it comes from Age of Crusades. Yep. All the old friend new enemies from invasions use Viking boards, and all the old friends new enemies from oh. Age of Vikings use invasion boards. Got it. So you'd really be duplicating about six or seven of the war bands. Um, and then, I don't know. Yeah, you know, there's different equipment options here. So I kind of feel you know about half of those are kind of obviously better uh yeah you know if you're running the carolingians you know you'd want to do vandals instead so you know so you could take the levy bow or you take the mounted irish hero you know i didn't think they'd be used in the right spirit of the old friends new enemies and it it. it just kind of cut down on confusion too uh we've already got enough going on with everything else um you know, we're going to have 21 factions or no 19 factions. So, yep. um, yeah, that's that's what we're dealing with. And uh, I'll stick by that. Now, Monty, is there one right way to run a tournament? No. No, there is. There is. It's going to be this way. No, okay. I'm, well, <laughs> okay. I'm messing with you. Um, yes, you are. Yes. There is no right way. Um, any decision I, I make here... Somebody could do the opposite, and if you did all the opposites, you'd probably, I, I would still go to that event. I think that'd be a good event, you know. So my perspective here is, um, you know, we want each event to kind of have something interesting and unique about it because we've been playing Saga a long time. There's not a lot of new books coming out, you know, so it's up to the event organizers to inject, you know, some variables here and Mm -hmm. so hopefully folks will look at this and be like okay well based off these restrictions these scenarios and the war bands i have i think you know this these this one or two is going to be my best bet for this particular event based off this lineup so that's kind of what i'm trying to get folks to do here you know that's kind of my perspective does that make sense that makes perfect sense, dude. And I, I do agree. I mean, you know, you, you can have any kind of event. Number one, have an event. But then number mm-hmm. two, you're the TO. So put your personal stamp on it. Yeah. So, and then I forget the other second rule of being a TO is run the event that you want to go to yourself. So uh, this this is it. This is the one I want to play in. But moving on, we're going to do no legendary warlords or units. That's good. Got some jank mm-hmm. in there. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're not going to use war banners, Monty. Yep. So there, there's an interesting discrepancy there between Vikings and invasions because there are no war banners in the invasions book. That equipment is not in there. So you would either, for fairness, you could say that both, you know, both should be able to get it, or so I'm going to say neither. And I don't know. War banners don't seem to be used to bring enjoyment to the opponent, <laughs> generally. So I'm okay. True. I'm okay leaving them out. Um, all right, moving down to mercs. So each war bank can bring up to one mercenary unit. I'm cool with mercs. I think we should use mercs. But there's some discrepancies between the mercs and the Vikings and the invasions, um, such as the steppe tribes or pneumatic horsemen. Monty, did you notice some of that stuff? So the uh, Age of Invasions nomadic horsemen, okay. they're clones of the steppe tribes, but then they also have an additional rule to make them better. Okay. It seemed like Studio Tomahawk saw that they weren't being used and they needed a buff. Okay. You know, so you have, you know, so Vikings players can't use those guys, but the Invasions get them. And then um, similar with the priest and the seer. So the priest has been fact to not generate a saga die. So the seer does the same thing in Age of Invasions, but he 
does generate a socket eye. He hasn't been nope. faxed, so that's another discrepancy. Um, so what I've chosen to do, and just to kind of cut down on the madness here, is uh, I created my own chart of the different uh, mercs here. So this was kind of loosely based off the fact chart for Age of Vikings, um, those choices. and But um, what I did was both can take the personal champion in each age. Uh, you know, so those, those rules are the same once you get the fact included. Uh, but then I chose five from Age of Invasions and five from Age of Vikings. And then I created a chart and there's some new options here for the Viking players. They can take some stuff that they wouldn't have access to. They could take a bishop or these uh, nomadic horsemen, which are better than the steppe tribes. They can take uh, the Molossian war dogs. So there's new options for the Viking players. Yep. And then it's the same thing for the invasion players. They can take some things that, um, you know, the scouts from Age of Vikings, you know, those aren't in the invasions. Um, so I kind of chose the more tame ones overall. Yeah, kind of the less crazy of the Merc options here. And yep. uh, yeah. Now, one thing was, Monty, did you see the Yams Vikings here? I did. I'm giving I'm giving them a personal champ, baby. Get, yeah, well, I like. I think they're gonna like that. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Hopefully, there'll be some Yams Vikings, and I think, I think so. I think they're gonna enjoy the personal champion. You know, there's gonna be yep. uh, some fun stuff there. I'm just imagining the possibilities with the personal I like champ. It. There's that one ability that says it affects heroes, so. Yeah, you know, they yep. must have intended to get a hero some other way. Exactly. Um, so, yeah, we got a new chart on here. So we got some fun options. Nice. Um, yeah. Moving yeah, on. Yeah, I love it. This took a little time, Raj. Nicely done. Yeah, it took, took some time. Um, okay, so we are going to be fully painted for this one. Sorry, Monty. I know. No. <laughs> okay. It's not going to be a problem for you. No, I think I'll be good. Uh, we want this to be a showcase event for, for the hobby. And, uh, yeah, we're doing WYSIWYG on the equipment as well. So if you want to switch yep. stuff around, you got to swap between games. Terrain is going to be the way that I've been doing it. There's a full terrain set shared by two tables. And... Um, you know, so it's a race to that solid cover between <laughs> you and your, your friends. So uh, when you're building your army list, you got to kind of factor that in. You might not be able to get it in every game. And then there's actually quite a few scenarios that kind of monkey around with that as well. Good. Uh, the scoring is pretty similar to what I've been doing before. So every win is uh, three fame points, two fame points for a draw. And then if you kill the enemy warlord, get another fame point. If you get a big massacre, 24 points or more, that's another fame point. Uh, for using survival, you need 12 or more. And then if you only lose by five or less, we'll, we'll chuck a point at you. Does that sound good, Monty? I love this. This is awesome. Yeah. yeah I, I especially love the extra point for killing the enemy warlord. Go after, you know, go after him. Go get some points. Yeah. So this will help differentiate between the top dogs, you know, making sure you're playing aggressive and racking up uh, some big body counts. Right. And then also if you're losing, you know, sometimes, you know, you lose that eight hearth guard on turn two and, uh, <laughs> you know, you're probably not coming back, but if you can kill the enemy warlord, if yep. you can get the mat, you know, you've got a couple, couple achievements here to kind of yeah. keep you playing. So it's not just an automatic uh surrender um the scenarios are in the packet here we're going to get into those um now we're going to talk about the first or second player bidding monty so um saga is a game people are recording stats now money about first and second players i've done it a little bit and uh you know so some people have a concern about advantage for a second player in certain scenarios and then uh, first player and, and some other ones. So 
Um, let me be clear. I, I don't think this is an issue with Saga in general. I think every game has this issue, but I think with Saga, there's a couple things. One, there's so few official scenarios. Um, you know, Age of Sigmar or something, you know, there's probably like a hundred scenarios, you know, they're wow. churning out scenarios out the yin. Every book has more scenarios, more scenarios. <laughs> um, but, then, you know, in a fantasy setting, you know, it makes more sense. You know, you can just do whatever. Uh, magic, vortex, weird stuff. Uh, in a historical game, you know, it's a little, because you want them to make sense, kind of. Um, so we don't have a lot of scenarios. And then the community, you know, some of the vocal people, the top players in the community have, so I started with Mark, and then I've talked about it, and then JP at activation phase. Um, you know, so the top players, uh, at least vocally, you know, are interested in that topic and have raised awareness. Um, like, I've raised this issue in uh, the Infinity community and had data and stuff, but nobody, none of the, you know, I'm not a, a big dog over there or anything, uh, but the kind of the top players weren't really interested in looking into it any further so a um, little background there on the first for a second player issue so we're going to do some bidding here so what you're going to do is you're going to hide some dice under your hand Monty if you don't want to bid anything you're not going to put anything under there you yep. can maybe pretend pretend that you put a dice under there Monty yep. um, you're going to whatever put whatever side face up that's that's going to be your bid and then you guys will reveal simultaneously, and whoever is the highest will get to decide first or second player. And then you immediately give your opponent that many bonus points. Um, so yeah, what do you? I don't know. What, what did you think of that, Monty? When you read yeah, that, I think that's awesome. Like for the people who don't want to give it much thought, they can simply put a bit of one point or not even put a die under their hand. Um, to someone else who really has very strong feelings, well, now's your chance to uh, put some point totals in there to try to pull the result that you want. So I mm -hmm. think that's awesome. Yeah, and I, I think we were talking, you know, I'm going to record this at the event. You know, it'll be part of the, the score sheet, so we'll get to see what people do and what they bid. But um, I think we forecast a lot of zero zero tie bids. Agree. <laughs> for Agree. Uh, especially if you're not a super big tournament player, but then once you get into day two on the top tables and stuff, then it'll, you know people know what's going on. It'll be really interesting. But um, yeah, I'll be curious to see how it goes. Um, I don't think this is a going to be a panacea because it's going to introduce some strange elements because. Saga games are so close. Uh, so JP, you know, he was crunching the numbers. He posted them on the Saga Thursday Discord. And, you know, he was kind of suggesting that the first or the second player advantage in some scenarios was worth like five or six points. Um, but if you bid five or six points, you give me five points at the start of the game. Uh, I might end up playing very, very differently. Um, you know, this could actually... Uh, you know, kind of work against, you know, depending on defensive yep. attack faction, you know, if I'm an Anglo Dane, you just gave me five points, you know, it might kind of work against the fun game. So we'll, we'll have to see. I, I have some concerns, but we're going to, we're going to try it out. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I guess if you are going to do a really big bid, you, you need to be an aggressive faction because otherwise <laughs> if that other guy doesn't come at you, yeah, it's turn three and you're six points down and nothing's happening. Uh, yeah, you gotta you gotta get moving. Yep. Uh, okay, so we're gonna try that. Yeah, and report back. But uh, yeah, we will give it a shot. Uh, prizes, nothing for first place, but uh, we'll be giving away boxes. I think the last two events we had prizes for every single person who came there. Mostly just. Leftovers from Zach and I's paint and hobby and model collection, but awesome. uh, we should have a pretty big budget for some additional goodies this time around. And then uh, we are interested in glasses, dice, and shirts and stuff like that. So stay tuned there. I think the shirts will probably be an add-on. Um, if we get a certain number of players, we might do dice or glasses. So I'm thinking just offhand right now, if we get 24 players signed up, then we'll give away a pint glass. 
for to everybody for the event, you know, with the official event logo and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, let's get to the the scenarios here, Monty. Let the blood run. Let the blood run here. So we're going to kick it off. This is a uh, battle around the campfire style uh, scenario. So um, this is very similar to the scenario we did that the very first one at All Fathers Day. Yeah. Um, so the one thing about this is the, you know, the deployment gets kind of crazy. So we, we like that. Um, my version is a little more toned down as far as the fatigues and the saga dice. Um, we're not going to get into that. We're going to get into the special rule I want to mm -hmm. talk about. So, uh, on the one at All Father's Day, you just got a bonus point every time you declared a charge, which is fun. But, uh, you know, sometimes you'll just charge one guy in and, uh, mm -hmm. you know, he doesn't do anything, but you get that point. So I wanted to kind of make the uh, charges... Like, you you get some bonus points for being aggressive, but you got to kill stuff. So, um, the special rule here is on your turn, any enemy casualties you uh, cause in step six of a melee, uh, those casualties are set aside separately from all other casualties. And we're going to call that your blood pool. And then at the start of your turn... If your blood pool has more models than your opponents, and you're going to ignore presence for this, you score a bonus point, and you roll an extra saga die at the start of your orders phase. So this is at the beginning here. So um, you're starting out close. It's going to be up to the, the first player here to probably get it going. But yep. um, the way this works is you, know, you can play the whole game, and neither player ever gets the bonus point because... You don't get it until the start of your next turn. So your opponent knows exactly how many models are in your blood pool. And so they always need to, you know, just kill one more guy than you to stop you from getting that bonus point. Um, so this is melee oriented. Um, so you could uh, have shooting factions. It's just one bonus point, Monty. You could forego it. Uh, but the extra saga dice for the enemy i think that might tip tip the scales towards engaging oh yeah um yeah so i guess my scenario philosophy with saga is um you know there's objective heavily objective based you know you lose your entire army but you hold the thing at the end of the game you could have a scenario where that's like a, a win but in my opinion i like the uh special rules and bonus points just kind of nudge a little bit and you can decide whether you're going to go for it or not and see if you can win in despite of not going for the objective i don't know what do you what do you think of that approach money um i mean i like it i uh i love battle around the campfire and i like the twist you put on here i like uh that you know, well, I, I also like in here you suck in something that if the warlord, I think that's in the current one, if you, if the warlord's not within M at the end of the game, yeah, uh, he's going to die. So they don't like run away, hide in hardcover, and like now it becomes like whack-a-mole trying to chase the hiding units. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I I like uh, objectives that you can get some points, but um, you're not going to win automatically just because you got the objective. Um, you know, in Saga, you don't have a lot of units. Um, you don't necessarily have a lot of mobility in certain factions. So I think if you put too much emphasis on the objectives, um, it can be to the detriment of certain factions. So uh, that was kind of my, some of my mindset there. Uh, let's jump to round two, Battle of Heroes, Monty. Yeah, this one's a mystery. Yeah, so what we're going to do is on the day of the event, we're going to I'm going to pull the Battle of Heroes. I got the cards. I got some right here in my hand. Um I'm just going to draw randomly, so the chaos option. And then whatever we get, 
all the tables are going to play that same <laughs> that same option. So you know, we're all doing the same scenario, but we don't know ahead of time what exactly is going to be the scenario. Um, but uh, I am going to cut down on the, the chaos a little bit. So what I'm going to do is um, right off the you know, right at the beginning here, I've eliminated one of the options from each of the categories. And then every episode that you and I do, Monty, I'm going to eliminate one more before the event. Okay. So I'm not going to, I'm going to say it verbally in the episode, but I'm not going to post it anywhere. So you're going to have to listen and you, know, if anybody wants to write that down or whatever, it's up to you to see which ones have been eliminated. But, um, so the ones that I've pulled out already are uh, Marshy Country. So I pulled that one because uh, every table needs two marshes, I think, and I don't have that. <laughs> I don't. I don't have that much terrain <laughs> to lot. support that one. Um, and there may be another one like that that I have to pull as well. Um, I pulled Meeting Encounter. Uh, this is the one where you choose points on the table edge, and uh, you can end up. With two armies like really, you know, locked into a corner with each other. Remember that one yep. game in the campaign, Monty? Yeah, not a lot of fun. We, Good choice. <laughs> we, yeah, we played that whole battle within like, uh, you know, like a foot and a half by a foot and a half of that that table. So that one's a little little crazy. I tossed that out. Um, cautious. I threw that one out because it's the first player's opponent begins the game, and. Uh, uh, if you're yeah. first player, you should be first player. That's my exactly. That's my that opinion. Is, that's so that, a weird one. That one's gone. Uh, Dash and nostalgia. I tossed that one. That's the one where the warlords generate an extra saga die, and then mercs okay. don't generate. So um, I tossed that. I want to encourage some fun mercs. So I don't want to spook anybody. And then if your warlord's generating two saga die, then you're you're kind of cautious with that guy. I found. So uh, we don't yeah. want that. We want crazy. Crazy fighty warlords. And then um, the last one, victory conditions, target. I tossed that one. This is the one that I get every every time we do Battle of Heroes. This is the one that gets pulled just by chance. So I'm, I'm sick of this one. Okay. Uh, so I tossed Fair. that one. So uh, those ones are gone. And if you follow along, you can, I guess, Monty, you'll know for sure what ones we're going to toss each month. Um. So, yeah, it'll be interesting. There's some, especially with the special rules. Um, we got Night Fight, Forced March, where uh, the first two turns, everybody moves as if they've had a fatigue spent on them. So everybody moves short. Um, I think there's one that reduces shooting to medium. So uh, there's definitely going to be some cross fingers, I think, on the day of the event for that one. Right, right. Uh, but that's going to be round two. Uh, round three, we're doing a variation on what is it? Looting and pillaging. The three objectives Feasting in the middle. Pillaging. Feasting yep. and pillaging. Um, so this one does have its own little thing as well. So um, each objective, when you capture it, you put a dice with the four side next to it. That is how many points that objective is worth. Now, during the course of the game, each time a unit holding the objective rests, you reduce the number on that die by one. If it's a non-mercenary Hearthguard or Warrior unit that did the resting, you immediately score that point. So you kind of okay. bank that point. Okay. Um, now the levy, can't trust the levy, can't trust the mercs. Um, no. So it'll reduce the points on that objective if you rest, but... Um, you don't bank it, so okay. Um, and the warlord won't generate. Yeah, he can't carry it, Monty. Where's he? You don't have pockets in those battle yeah. trousers. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> I love it. Uh, so that's the variation on that one. So it'll be interesting because once it's down to when the objective is worth two points, I mean, do you try to? I mean, is it worth trying to go after it at that at that point? Yeah. Um, so if you, I don't know, it's interesting because if you if somebody gets up early, grabs them all, and then rests once or twice and kind of drains all the points out of them, um, I think it's going to be tough for that guy who kind of let the initiative go. So 
Um, you kind of got to stay on top of these. But right. um, yeah, that's the variation here. Got to have an objective one. The last two tournaments I did, I haven't had an ad actual objective grab scenario. So this is it for the event. Um, all right, Monty. Wrath of the Warlords. So we're taking it up a notch. Day two. Yep. Um, this is kind of like Clash of Warlords. So this one was inspired by Clash of Warlords. We're doing diagonal deployment. I like it. We haven't seen that a lot. Um, I haven't done it because I would have to make different Photoshop files for the little battlefield. So I finally made some triangles for it. Um, this one is interesting with, um, so during the game, you're going to set aside casualties that weren't, uh, killed in melee in step six of melee at the end of the game. Anything that wasn't killed in melee is calculated as if it's levy instead of the normal classification. Wow. So that one is dinging. It's just outright dinging shooting. Yep. Um, but Money. Who, what were the top armies at Adepticon this year? There has been a run on shooting armies kind of dominating at the top of the charts, both at Adepticon and some recent events that I've been tracking in Discord. Yeah, so in Adepticon's past, there was always a scenario that shooting, anything killed by shooting is worth zero points. I've played in many Adepticon tournaments where we had that scenario, and that was always there, uh, in particular due to the Step Tribes from version one, where the instigators there. But um, I do think that needs to come back because of the way that you play it safe in Saga. Um, right. You know, we want to have a wide field of options and armies for people to choose from, and uh, you can still take a shooting army. But on day two, you got to have to have a little something in your pocket or enough firepower to just uh, blow through this victory point deficiency. Um, and then also at the end of the game, anything in its own deployment area uh, counts as being eliminated. But per the special rules, they'll count as levy being killed. So yep. you got to come out and fight. Um, if, I love if it. If you just shoot, it's no good. Yep. So, yep. yeah, you and I, I think, are in agreement. Clash of Warlords, as is, not a good Too static, not a good scenario. So, yeah. uh, this one, we're going to try it out, see if it works, and uh, should should be fun. Um, yeah, make people think twice about their uh, faction that they choose, and yeah, I can't wait to see what people pick. Last one here, Lady of the Lake. So, uh, we want to fight. We don't want the objective to uh, automatically win you the game. So the way it's going to work is we've got the marsh. We got our Swanty in the middle there. Yep. We've got one, just one objective in this one. Um, so if you are holding this objective at the end of your turn with a Warlord, Hearthguard, or Warrior unit, you're going to score... Uh, I forgot to flip the image here. Uh, one bonus point mm -hmm. plus one additional bonus point for each consecutive turn you've had it without interruption. So if you had it at the end of your last turn, your opponent plays their turn, does not get the objective, and then you have it on your turn, you're going to get two points. If you get it three turns in a row, you get three points. Um, so... Basically, in this one, you have to go. You have to go get that objective. Yep. Uh, if you let that guy get to three, that means he's had one, two, six bonus points. Um, so you, this isn't scored on, you know, win at the end of the game. You have to go in and fight over this thing. Uh, what do you, I don't know, what do you think of this scenario? It's a little different. I, I love it. I mean, I see a common theme like, um, you know, Every one of these scenarios, including this one, means you can't just castle up. You can't just go on the you know rocky ground and put your bow and try to win there. You need to get up and move. So I think that's awesome. Yeah, and so it doesn't 
you know, just because having cavalry isn't going to, you oh, know, it's right. not just re- it's not right. just rewarding cavalry, you know, yeah. by being mobile, going after the objective. Um, and the way that the scoring works in the uh, share the wealth and this one, you can't have cav grab it. And, uh, you know, even if they don't move, you know, they can still rest. They can still get you points. Um, so, yeah, this one um, should be should be fine. You got to get out there. Yep. You can let them have it one turn for free, but you really got to have a plan uh, to stop them. Because if they get it three turns in a row, yeah, they're, they're going down. <laughs> um, yeah, so I didn't say, but Monty, did you notice on day two, you had to win by at least three more points than your opponent Ooh. as well? I see that now. Okay, okay. So, um, yeah, the tournament packet is going to be up on the Discord there's a lot of stuff I just kind of skipped over. A lot of yeah. these have something a little different about the terrain placement. I know, you know, one of our bugbears is everybody getting the rocky ground guaranteed with their unit of levy in there. So I want to make it a little trickier to bank on that. So, uh, yeah, take a look at the packet and then think about what uh, faction is going to seal the deal for you. Now, Monty, you are the first sign up for the event. Yes, firstest with the mostest. As well. You are the only one who has the complete tournament packet at this point <laughs> here. So you do have a distinct advantage. Uh, uh, it looks awesome. I am super excited about this. Up on the calendar, already have notes in my packet. This is going to be fun. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I'm looking forward to it. I'm, I'm really psyched. It was fun putting the packet together building the scenarios. Um, if you haven't figured it out already, I just want the humble Vikings players to have a chance this year. Yeah. That, that was my goal, Monty. And I, I, I absolutely think they do. This is awesome. Yeah, I think the Vikings, the Yams Vikings, with that personal champion option, yep. This yep. these scenarios, very good, the Norsegales. If you think the scenarios are going to scare away the shooting... That's the time to break out the Norris Gales, another favorite. Yep. Yep. Uh, I think Pega Roos, Scots, Franks. Uh, I think the Saxons can compete. Oh, yeah. In Goths. this scenario, the Goths, uh, with their flexibility of either mounted or not, um, could be very big contenders. Uh, but we, you know, our old favorites, the Welsh, Sassanids, Carolingians, Irish, can't rule those guys out either. Uh, strong contenders. So, I uh, I'm I'm pumped. I'm excited. I don't know what. So I'm gonna be the ringer. Yes, you know, so I'm not sure what faction I'm gonna I'm gonna have, but I uh, I'm, I'm pumped. This is the tournament I want to play in, man. So okay. Same. Let's move on to the gripping beast paint contest. They just had a yes. big sale. Yes. Uh, I don't believe it's still going uh as of the release of this video but they are a big part of why we can do the paint contest and let's get the where is it there we go yep we're going in the discord here so um theoden greets us at the start of every paint contest money I love it. And we had 16 entries. That is a official official record. That's so awesome. I think we were talking some people maybe didn't have the proper before picture. We're going to let it slide this time. Next time we're not going to uh, because of breaking that official number of 16. So um, let's start uh, chugging through here. It's going to it's yep. going to be a while. <laughs> 16 hits. Um, yeah, so the first one up is the Batman here. So within – he posted these on the 14th. The episode went up on the 7th. So he did – Yeah. I mean, he painted them all in one day even. Yep. So he's got these uh, hoplites here. Those cerises, judging by the length of those. Right, right. Uh, Syracuse hoplites. Uh, so, yeah, they are there to spear guys, but 
Um, yeah, Monty, what do you think of these guys? I like it. He, uh, I mean, it's pretty remarkable. So he painted them all um, two points worth of warriors in a day, and on top of it also did the shields. So that's a lot of work. Yeah, uh, the shields look really good. Um, and for doing it just just in the day. Oh, yeah. Uh, I like, there's a, kind of like a minotaur looking one. I like, yep. I like that one the best. Um, nice color variation. Good basin. I'm a turf. I'm a turf man, Monty. I don't, I don't need all that static grass like you fancy boys. Just give me some oh. turf oh. and I'm good. <laughs> good job. Uh, yeah, these look good. Uh, you did 16. I can only count eight of these. So we'll, we'll pick that the best eight batman and uh we'll, we'll factor that in all right uh moving down we got to scroll yeah little quite ways. a bit here little ways before we get to now uh, rocker 009 you posted non paint contest uh, miniatures in here you know right you know knock that off <laughs> it's not the appropriate channel they are some nice looking i think those are brother brother Vinny. oh i think they are Right. i mean they look good yeah yeah but uh, yeah, get it get it out of the paint contest section, dude. <laughs> All right, we got love disc golf. Got some yep. Greek Italiotes. Nice. Loving the Hannibal stuff. Yeah. Um, he's got to be uh, the shields. Are these was, decals or not? Yeah. They so kind of look I like think it. they're. I'm gonna get it wrong here. Um. They might be the Vinny, Vicky, Vic. There's one that's like oh, the decals. shield transfer is very Vinny tiny. Vinny. Yeah, different than uh, your little big man studio. Because, like, you could see the color on the shield and then maybe the transfer on top, but, mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, well, it's right here if I bother reading. Yep. Vinny, He's Vinny, Vinny, Vicky. Vicky. I pronounced it wrong, by the way. Nice. Yeah. He's nice. Guy. He looks good. Um. Square bases. I'm not sure what that's about. Good luck in uh, line rampant or whatever, whatever else you're using these for. But they look good. Yeah. Well done. Fencing ninja. He's got one point of Scots plus a banner. Nice. And uh, did he? I think he posted them twice. Like better pictures down the yeah, line. Yeah, yeah. Is better that right? Pictures. We get better pictures down okay, below. Okay. So we'll we'll skip over that for now. Right. Uh, so we'll go to Mr. Martin Teasdale here. Nice. Uh, with the dags. Squeezed all the hobby time he could. He didn't have time to varnish or glue tufts. He'll decide if, if they're finished or not here. Now, it's a good-looking guy. Good-looking uh, dogs here. But yep. Now, Monty, what did he do last time that I thought he was skimping on the challenge somehow? Um, was it a warlord challenge or something? I was busting his chops. I thought maybe it was a Dungeons and Dragons character or something, okay, not a saga okay. warlord. <laughs> now he has, uh, you know, met the, met the letter of the law, but the spirit of the challenge, I don't know. I think this might be a way around having to paint eight human warriors <laughs> trying to speed through with some dogs. Martin. Oh my gosh. Is that your plan? Be honest. I mean, the dogs look good, but uh, we can't. Dog is a lot easier to paint than a man, Monty. <laughs> I also like that the pintles are numbered. There's got to be something behind that. Yeah. Right? Yeah, one, seven, three, four, six. Yep. Look good. I like them. I yeah. do I do like the dogs. I, I think they look good. They are good. nice. Just busting your chops yep. a little bit, Martin. Uh, okay. We've got some recon, some reconquista. It says reconquer designs. Yeah. They may be, I think they've changed their too. name. Yeah. A little reboot or something. So these are 3d prints and these, these models are awesome. Yeah. Um, it's hard not to have your eyes on these. Uh, Monty, was there any serious consideration for, for you getting some some 3d prints buying these have you ever thought about buying these these models yes i mean these are so nice it's the first thing i want to do um is 
hit up someone I know to to uh, print these for me because they're just, you know, they've come so far. Yeah. Like there was a time, and there still are, right? I want to be very careful here. There are 3D prints that are stylistic. There are some that have a lot of character, but like these have just broken through to a whole new level. Like they're the right proportion. Uh, they're, they're exquisite in detail. Um, just, yeah, wow. Yeah, they look really good. The chainmail looks cool. Um, yeah, it's, it's great to have another option out there. Yep. And uh, yeah, everybody knows a guy with a printer nowadays. So <laughs> um, yeah, they're and I think they're getting into some. I want to say I thought I saw something they were doing for invasions. This same company. Okay. I want to say it was like a goth or uh, like a Saxon or something like that. Yeah, Maybe. I think I did see that. They were doing Moors, but they snuck in like a goth who was like an ally, I think, helping the Spanish. Yes. But maybe they were going to branch out from there. I have no idea. Yeah. Yeah, I could see that because depending on the time period, like, uh, you know, when they were going in there, you know, they were knocking over like the old Vandal kingdom, you know, the old goth kingdoms that yep. had just been hanging around for a while. Um, so... Yeah, these look great. The paint job, very, very good as well. Uh, so I think you match the uh, quality of the models with the paint job. Kind of interesting pastel, orange and baby blue. They look, they look good. Nice yeah. uh, stuff on the shields. And uh, I don't know which ones are the warriors here. What we're supposed to count? <laughs> you posted yeah. them all. So uh, I remember this. I remember he's got this the just... yeah. He's got the eight pack here. In their right, own, right. their own picture here. So, I think the tr the trick is here, um, and I know this because I was scouting, um, painting Spanish and adding them to the plate. Is that they? I don't think they they they're doing all these knights, and I don't think they worry too much about like doing warriors. So you basically have to maybe say these guys are up up armored warriors or something mm -hmm. along those oh, lines. Yeah. Call them whatever. Look good. Nice yeah. work. Great paint jobs. Looking down here, we got yep. Pain Train Dane. Pain Train. That's cool. We got the Victrix Vikings. Can't go through a paint contest without a couple of these boys showing yep. up. And his first tournament. How cool is that? That's cool. I like yeah. the the basing there. Like, you know, he didn't. It's so it, it. You know, that it looks real. Yeah, you know, it's like realistic rock basing i, I yep. kind of like that actually uh yeah save some time that looks, looks good cool. nice work needs to get some decals on those shields though money <laughs> all right yeah fencing ninja we're coming back around he had some he blurry photos and uh yeah, he posted out some of these. I guess it's just a crap load of warriors. Yeah. Nice. Like the repeating, like that cream, green, blue, red, some tartan stuff going on too. Nice snow theme. Nice banner. Yep. Very well done. Nothing to complain about there. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to. I think it's kind of a mix of figures. Might be some Victrix in there, but I think some there's some others. I too. see an old War Games factory a guy okay. in there. Okay. Okay. Uh, but the just just one, or if it's not, he's got the same janky pose that those guys always had. Um, I think maybe there are a couple of there. Looks like a mix. Uh, okay. Unfortunately. He probably said at the in his original post. Yeah. And this is the what he was using. Yeah. Uh, it's too late, money. We can't go all the way back. <laughs> we can't go. It's back. turn two. We're on turn four right now. Uh, okay. Uh, we got some magic in here. Rune fake. These things. Yeah. I was laughing so hard what, when I saw these things. This? I love it. They're kind of like. Nor. <laughs> you know they they. They, I mean, they kind of painted look like squigs, obviously. Yep. You know, they kind of, but 
Like, look at that. There's one on the left. And they're kind of like, I want to say probably like Nordic trolls or something. I got my oh, son a, like a troll yeah. book. And yeah. the trolls are, you know, they look very different. And, you know, uh, so I want to say these are kind of some weird troll guys. And then with the historical writers, that, that cracks it. me up. Uh, that's some good Age of Magic for you. Yep. Um, yeah, they look cool. Awesome. Um, that paint job to your is really cool. The way that he alternated the colors on the fur, so he didn't have to do that. No. Uh, and it, it turned out really good. It looks. It does look like a crazy badgers or something. I you love know? it. Nice uh, mix. Yeah, these guys are funny. Uh, yeah, nice work. Glotkin, we got some Victrix, Iberians, nice. and uh, very bright, very clean. Yeah, these are cool. I'm getting like a kind of like a First Nations, uh, like American, Native American vibe from these. I, I don't, I'm not sure it's intended that way, but I, at first I thought I was looking at some scralings here. Uh, just I don't know what what it is about those colors. I don't know, Monty, did are you pick it up on that? No, it's just me. Uh, I mean, <laughs> I'm uh, that's like that's an area that I'm just like I Yeah, and I don't I have, have any a, knowledge really, right. but I I don't know, but my brain is telling me that that's what those colors, you know, kind of come out as, but they look really cool. Um I do like uh the trim and everything, you know, yep. going the extra mile. I like the trim. Uh, you know, there's one guy, he's got it down the middle of his outfit there. And yep. then like another guy is in the middle of the sleeves in the middle. So I like that variation on Agreed. the, uh, trim, not just around the edges. Cause that's what I do. And I, I always think about doing that different kinds of trim, but I'm like, mm, what if it doesn't turn out good money? And then I have to repaint it. Right. So I appreciate your courage. Yeah. Uh, okay we're going along here look at these eastern roman so these would be the gripping beast plastic late roman yep. kit yep i forgot that they had those little hat heads on there um i kind of like yeah, those i like those better than the helmets actually right yeah it's an interesting look I, it also says levy because they can't afford to give you a metal hat. They just give you a little pillbox. That's true, but Monty, late Romans, these are warriors. Oh, You're treating oof. them like levy? Come on, man. <laughs> um, yeah. These are good models. Nice. I like, I like these figs. Yep. I like the basing. Nice colors. Square basing, once again. I'll let it go. Personal choice. Yeah, what? Well, yeah, we got to respect it. We got some Crusader Warriors with bows. Nice. Yeah. Now, are these. These look like metal models. Is there a company, Crusader Miniatures? Uh, I think there is. I wonder if I these don't... are like actual, yeah. Gosh, actual I don't Crusader recognize miniatures. these. I don't, but I mean, yeah, I mean, they're, uh, yeah, they're bowmen, ready to uh, have multiple turns in a row, fatigue-free shooting <laughs> with that Crusader board. <laughs> we, lo we love that. <laughs> yeah, they look good. Uh, yeah, just natural colors. Nice tuft. Proper circles, Monty. Got to yep. give some points for that. <laughs> uh, all right, we got some Mongols here. These, Mr. Yeah. Mo, these are great. I love these. Yeah, so this is a level of airbrushing that I wish I could maybe acquire. Yeah, the Very horses. Neat. Yeah. Um, if you look at them, yep. You know, some of them. You know, looks like a zenithal, yep. and then yep. he did color over it. I don't know. What's yep. the secret? I I don't know. I look at it. I'm like, this is good. Uh, this is good use of the airbrush. Very nice. Nice glow, like that orangey glow. That is really sweet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, these. Yeah, uh, I like these. I like these horses. Right, Mr. Bow. Yeah, please comment. Let us give us a little bit of the procedure here. 
Yeah. Uh, the, the horses in particular. Uh, those are great. You know, definitely Saga Thursday paint contests. You get extra points for those horses. I like the variety of colors. Yep. And um, yeah, I'd be scared to have this troop of guys coming at me. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah, because all the horses are maybe two or similar. Yeah, there's maybe two of each, but uh, different horses. And then you can taste the rainbow on the outfits. Yeah, yeah, well done. Uh, one of my top ones for sure. Very nice. Love the throat singing. Oh uh, yeah, <laughs> bonus. <laughs> uh, another good um, one here. The Ragnarok oh, yes. miniatures. Yeah, I couldn't quite place them, and luckily, so so luckily they did say what they were. Mm -hmm. Very nice. So this is a kind of a newer company. I've been watching them. They do old school green stuff sculpting and they have different kickstarters and they have you know kind of like tolkien-esque goblins uh like the draugr so kind of like nordic undead and uh, they do have dwarves and uh, vikings here uh these look really good i really i really like the models and the paint job with the different freehand on the hems and right. stuff that's awesome yep that's well done um, Very nice. And he went to town on the shields. He couldn't wait. He had to finish them for the for the contest. Right. <laughs> um, yeah, they look good here. Monty, can we figure out which one he did first? I don't Ooh. know. Usually, you know, the first one. I'm sure by the end of it, he was a master. Yeah, yeah. But um, no, nope. These turned out good. Very I nice. I like what I see here. All right. We're closing in. Yep. Here we go. We've Age got of magic. some skeletons. Yep. Or a mix of something. I can tell these yeah. are converted. Kit bash. Yeah. This one we don't have the proper before pick, but we'll let it slide. We got different skulls here. These the Warhammer, the Games Workshop Undead, the skeletons, I think. It's hard to beat those skeletons. Agree. Um, those are some of the best. But digging the purple. I love it. Like, and the purple sneaks into places where you don't expect it. It's actually reoccurring in the shields. Mm -hmm. Very just subtle. Slightly. Yeah. Right, right. Exactly. You could just see it. So it's like that's that's a nice touch. Yeah. And purple and snow. They just go together, man. Yep. They go together good. Uh, so dark scheme. Yeah, looking good. Terry, Chicago Saga guy, doing some, I think these are goth. Yep. Nobles. Took took the pics in uh, portrait mode with his cell phone, apparently. Got it. Couldn't give us a landscape, Terry. Come on. <laughs> uh, here we go. Yeah. Um, yeah. Eight horses. It's tall order, especially when you're you're in a rush here. So if we were able to motivate you, good job. Yep. This one shield's looking kind of rough, but the rest of these are, are pretty cool, actually. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's the challenge of uh, hand painting the shields. Yeah. So I did some goth nobles recently. I like them. Nice. All right. We got Chris from Poznan, so he's been yep. on the show before, doing some eight warg riders for nice. Age of Magic Horde here. I don't know, does Scott give him some secret info here on the composite bow horde right. warriors it's, and the uh, utility? It's, it's a good tool. Yes, it is. Yeah. So another one missing the proper before, but we'll we'll let it ride. Um, there are 3D printed files from Medbury Miniatures. So, nice. yeah, Medbury is one that I have my eye on. They do a lot of the Lord of the Rings style stuff. And then if okay. I remember correctly, they might, they might have some Normans uh, kicking around too. So, okay. Yeah, like different kinds of wargs here, different colors. Well, it was zoomed in on the tail, super zoomed in. It's nice tail. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Looks good. 
Yeah, probably easier to paint than a horse. The textured. Yeah, yeah. Wolf, if they give you, if they're they a little give you lower in the hierarchy than the horse, Monty. I gotta say, <laughs> they're above a dog, but below, below a horse. I love it. Um, okay, so yeah, that's the. Oh no, is there one more? Who do we got? Oh, uh, one more, one more. Some uh, Spanish, maybe. Brother Rubik's Looks like okay. Spanish. Looks like a uh, gripping bee Spanish. Gripping bee Spanish. These. Yeah. Made it in, looking good, top down. Yep. Red yep. and yellow, some white. Yep. I like it. There we go. Nice basing. Nice. Basic. I'm not going to sneeze at that. No. Looks good, man. Yeah. Nice yeah. color theme. Nice backdrop, too. We're on the beach going into the the grass there. Right. Looks good. Um yeah, so 16 entries. That's awesome. Most we've ever had. Um, Good job. Yeah, we'll keep plugging through them. Uh, we'll do it again. We are going to pick our favorite. So, Monty, what's your top three, you would say? Ooh, this was seriously tough, as it always was. I mean, every time we do this, uh, every time we do this, I have trouble, but... Mm -hmm. Um, the, uh, gosh, I gotta get the names right on this. They're not reconquista. They're reconquer designs. Wow. I just, yeah, I just, the, the detail on these, um, plus the painting together, just right, right at the top of the heap. I guess the yep. a second one is I adore, I just, I don't even know what I'm looking at, but I just adore these trollish four legged <laughs> creatures <laughs> Kit bash together. They, uh, I mean, they're so full of character. I can't think of anything that's looked this full of character, this unique. I don't even know what these are, but I, I love them. Yeah, they're cool. They kind of look like maybe they're like kids' toys or something, like yeah, almost. I you wonder. Know? And then he puts a, some models on the back. Yeah, I get a kick out of those. Um, so that's two. Do you have a, a third favorite, oh, Monty? man, I, I struggle. We'll, we'll, uh, like, just we'll call knife it edge. Tip. Okay, I, Mr. Moe's, the, the brightness and knowing how hard the damn airbrush is to use properly, um, you know, kudos for making it behave on painting your horses and making them glow like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so Mr. Moe, he's in my top three for sure. Uh, the other one is Eka. With his Ragnar, yes, Ragnarok miniatures, yes, yes, with the red, the white, the free so hand. So nice. Um, they look good. I like the the dude without the helmet. Kind of wish there was perfect. More. Um, and then of course, yes, the Reconquer Spanish are in my top three as well. And so between the two of us, we I think we're in agreement. The Spanish Monty Reconquer. Yeah, um, he's got some close-ups. Yeah, Oof, Oceana you know, here. Yeah, you know when you when you get in that close, the camera is so unforgiving. Mm -hmm. Um, it looks awesome. Yeah, they look good close up, and uh, that's how I judge all my models unnecessarily. So, uh, yeah, nice, nice work, O'Shannon. You are the winner. You're gonna get, Monty. You can't see it, but I have obtained the official Thirsty Thor's Day. Yes. Pint glasses. These are going to go out. So it took a while to figure out. I'm going to take a little sip right here. Monty, Cheers. take a sip. Yeah, you're going to get one, Monty. Next time I see you, you get oh, you get bye. one as well. <laughs> you you may not be able to participate in the, the paint contest, but the contest in my heart, you're always the winner, buddy. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> so, <Yes>. yeah. Uh, <laughs> the Saga Thor's Day patrons help pick this out there's a couple different options here i've got a ton of these so at some point maybe they'll they'll be a, a different run but we're going to send that out to jp and elderman andrew i think won the first two contests now o'shannon so uh ping me o'shannon give me your details and i'll get one of these pint glasses mailed out to you yeah so that is awesome now we are going to give away the random prize as well. Okay. okay. Let's see if I did. Random cued my number stuff generator up right here. Yeah. Okay. So I've got one through sixteen 
here numbered. Monty can't see them, but okay, the folks okay. at home can. And then I'm going to bring up the random generator here. Going 1 through 16. Can you see that? We're going to generate, and then it's number 9. So hopefully that's not O'Shannon because we'd have to do it again. <laughs> right. He's not Glotkin. Nice. So I think – sounds familiar. I think he's won before, but uh, if not, congratulations. If you have, you are a lucky – SOB number nine, lucky number nine, Glockin. Thank you to everybody for participating. Thank you to Gripping Beast. So, Glockin, get a hold of me. I'll give you the info on how to uh, do get, get your free plastic kit from Gripping Beast. So, uh, thanks to the Beast, man. But we are yep. not done, Monty. We've got other goodies to give away. Oh, um, right. Yeah, so Saga Thursday has a Discord and a Patreon. So mm -hmm. we are working towards our goal of a Saga Thursday podcast. So I set up the RSS feed, get the audio in there. After that, we're looking at a fourth episode per month. Wow. Um, I don't know what's going to happen if we reach that. Uh, <laughs> don't have to I'll, I'll be right. I'll be ready. I'll become ready. Uh, you rise to the challenge, right, Manny? Um, so thank you to everybody who has been contributing to that. I'll just bring up the thank you tab right now. Terry, Patrick, Sean, Mitchell, Kevin. Those are our big dogs, but we've got a lot of others. And we've got a new a new Levy fellow joined this month. Now, the Levy, you don't get a name on here, but thank you, sir. You know who you are. And uh, every quarter, we will draw some some fun stuff. So if you're a warrior or higher, you are eligible for a plastic set from Gripping Beast. So if you missed it in the paint contest, you can get it here. Um, so we've got quite a few folks. And I'm going to do that one right now. So every month that you are a patron at Warrior or higher, you get an entry. And uh, we're going to bring it up to 76. Folks, generate 47. Uh, that is, my font is very small here, but I believe it's Nathaniel, 45 through 47. Uh, congrats, Nathaniel. He's actually one of our, well, he lives, he's the person who lives closest to me, Monty. It's a little suspicious. I don't know that he wants, <laughs> he lives about a half a mile away from me and he chooses wow. to support the Patreon. Uh, the package is still going to be coming from the UK, though, so uh, doesn't save any shipping there. Um, so if you are a hearth guard or higher, you will get a painted unit from me. And there's fewer entries here on this one. Um, so to clarify, this will be a unit of mercenaries that I have or a unit of hearth guards. So I have a few different options at the moment. And let's see... 18 is, oh, come on. That's not right. It's Nathaniel again. Uh, so, <laughs> wow, congrats. Now now it is suspicious. Mom, it I shouldn't have said that. I should have been. Mom's the word. So, uh, yeah, that's the, the way it goes. So, congrats, uh, Nathaniel. I guess I'll wait for to hear from you. And, yeah. That will save on shipping, I guess. I'll give him some goodies. I do have a Blood Bowl team he's been asking about. Maybe I'll just give him the Blood Bowl team uh, instead nice. of the Saga models. But uh, thank you to all the patrons. And we couldn't do it without you. There wouldn't be so many episodes. Um, what else do we have on the docket here? Um Next week, Monty, we are doing a Mongols faction review. Oh, yes. They're coming, baby. I'm talking yes. to Terry on Love that it. one. So that's going to be August 11th. On the 18th, we are talking with the Mighty Dukit, and we are wow. doing a faction review for the other world, Age okay. of Magic. Wow. So, I love it. That's going to be good. And so when I pinged him, I knew he played. He said, well, I don't, he was like, I don't know if 
if I'll be a good person to talk to because I, I play them so differently than everybody else. And I'm like, that's what that's makes perfect. you the perfect yeah. person to talk exactly. to. Exactly. So we did disagree on a, a couple abilities there uh, and spells and stuff like that. So the Age of Magic ones are very long. A lot to discuss with those ones with all the options. But yeah, the Mighty Duke it, pillar of the community. So it was good to talk to him and yes. put a face to the the man behind all the rules, questions, right. uh, answers on the Discord server. So, uh, if you're not on the Discord, get on there. We're up to 565 members, Monty. That it's is... busy. I mean, there is like new new posts coming up all the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. There's always good stuff on there. I'm lurking, reading. Sometimes I post, but mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that is it. We finished it somehow well done that was a long packet and a long uh number of entries for the paint contest but i'm pretty sure we covered everything and yeah i'm pretty stoked about this episode i think it's a good one and registration is open for fimble winter people so i definitely am hoping this can be a uh, world-class saga event in the United States here, akin to the big grand melees. Yep. Um, I would love for this to uh, be the first of many such events. You know, have one down in Texas or over in the east or the west. Right. Give us um, some reasons to travel. We need more than just a Depticon out there for, for right. a big event. Don't you think, Monty? Agree. And um, if I could just, like, since you made this idea pop in my head, so the, the Saga World Cup was amazing, I've heard, mm -hmm. and then it was on ice. So hopefully 2023, the world opens up again, and maybe we can kind of bash mm -hmm. up uh, best players who can travel. It's monkey pox, you know. Monty. Monkey pox. It's coming for us. <laughs> Oh, my God. I'm still going. <laughs> yeah, no, seriously. So, yeah, having more uh, more events stateside and, uh, you know, I don't know, more events. Yeah, I agree. This is going to be fun. I want everybody from the Midwest to, to come yes. out for this. Yes. Um, it's wintertime. I know it. You know, whatever. We'll figure it out. Yeah, I've done events in the winter before. Mm -hmm. People make it. Um, oh, yeah. If I know you, I am... I'm pinging you mercilessly until you yes. sign up. That's that's the way it's going here. So Perfect. hopefully we're going to have a good turnout. It's going to be an awesome event. We got six months to go. I need like a little countdown counter or something here so I can just count the days. I think that's a, a good idea. But before then, we've got Saga Storm. Yep. We won't be chatting about that next episode, but the following one. So I'm going to be there. Um, we're going to awesome. get back to the Age of Magic uh, you know, our faction breakdown summary for Age of Vikings was very popular, Monty. Yes, it was. So we're gonna we're gonna do that again for Age of Magic at some point. Um, I don't have any uh, secret information, but uh, hopefully, Age of Alexander will will come sometime in the fall here too. Right. But uh, yeah, we don't have anything on that at this time. But I think. That's about it. Monty, thanks again for, for coming on here. Yep. Folks, thanks for having watch me. Watch and comment below if you think my scenarios are dookie and uh, my <laughs> bidding is dumb and uh, the merch choices are off the, the rails. And I, I need a tongue lash and go ahead, give it to me below. Uh, yeah, all comments are good comments, Monty, right? Agree. Uh, okay. Well, that's it for this one. I'll talk to you later, buddy. Have a good one. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Saga! If you'd like to see more Saga content, consider joining the Heathen Army over on Patreon or popping on down to the Saga Thursday Discord server. Links below. Thanks, guys.